Here he is, the one, the only... Uh, first of all, George, what's the secret word tonight? Well, let's have the duck come down and find out. Fine. Now, if any of our couples say this word, they'll win an extra hundred dollars. Okay, Ducky, you may leave. Pat Winneman and Dr. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Proctor... Wait, wait, uh, just a moment. You said, here is Pat Winneman. Where is she? <laughs> she's out, out there. Why don't you say she's out there? Groucho, Pat Winneman's out there. Well, <laughs> now, how, how do you know she's out there? Groucho, I don't know Pat Winneman's out there, and... and uh, <laughs> And with her... Uh, George, Pat Winneman, I guess that's Pat Winneman. Come in, folks. And that's Dr. Proctor Thompson with yes, her there. Yes, he is out there, yes. There so is if Pat, uh, Pat and Dr. will come out, my, uh, I'll get away here. Good evening. Hi. Well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and uh, you can take home Pat Winneman. Either well, that or you. you can split $100. Thank Pat you, Pat Winneman and Dr. Proctor... Dr. Proctor Thompson. Dr. Proctor Thompson. <laughs> You know that old uh, Dr. Proctor went to Gloucester in a shower of rain? He fell in a puddle up to his model and never went there again? <laughs> That's from Mother Goose. That's true. I think it was Dr. Foster who went to Gloucester in a shower. Well, forget it. Now, Pat, what kind of a hairdo is that? Do you... <laughs> is all your hair standing up that way because I frighten you? No, Groucho, this is called a beehive hairdo. It is? Yes, uh-huh. Well, do you behave in that beehive? Or? No, but I've got so much hair and it's so wiry and I have to do something with it, so every week I do a different hairdo. One uh-huh. week it's a beehive and one week it's an uh, uh, egghead hairdo and one week it's a Tower of Babel, and so I have a lot of fun that way. In other words, you're trying to attract attention, is that yes, it? Yes, uh, exactly. Well, it's uh-huh. very unusual. If I were a bee, I'd never go home. <laughs> Mr. Proctor, let's get acquainted with you. Where are you from, Doc? Baltimore, M.D., or Chicago, L.? No, I'm from Ohio. Did you get... Did you understand that joke? <laughs> are you from Baltimore, M.D., or Chicago, L.? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm not a pill doctor, Groucho. I'm a talking doctor. I'm a Ph.D., and my, and my specialty is economics. Oh, well, that's... Most doctors today, their specialty is economics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the real thing. Now, where are you, where do you, where do you say you're from? But right now, I teach out at Claremont Men's College. Oh, that's a fine school. Now then, uh, Miss Winneman, uh, may I call you Pat or Patsy? Well, it's not Miss Winneman, uh, Groucho, it's Mrs. Winneman. You mean you've nailed a sucker? Uh, yes, <laughs> I wouldn't call him a sucker. You wouldn't? No, I wouldn't. What I do wouldn't you call, call any man a sucker. As you wouldn't? Fact. No, uh-uh. Are you a Patsy, Pat? Well, if you mean by that the connotation of being a patsy or a fall guy, no, I wouldn't say that. No? I, no, I'd say that uh, if I want to be taken advantage of, I leave myself wide open. And if I don't want to be taken advantage of, nobody's going to take advantage of me. And well, consequently, if... You say you're married? Yes. We have a professor of economics here. Doc, who, in your opinion, should handle the money, the husband or the wife? Yes, well... Uh, uh, are you married, Doc? Yes, I'm, I'm married. Mm-hmm. And I must say that after mature and careful consideration to this problem... And an empty beer bottle. <laughs> I'm of the opinion that the wife should handle the money. Mm-hmm. Why? Because... Three wealthy widows out there applauding. <laughs> uh, get in touch with them later, too. Because contrary to song and story and contrary to current stereotypes, women are actually shrewd and crafty and practical and conniving yes indeed and it's the men <laughs> it's the men that are that are Who the romanticists the yes of course this is true men have always been the romanticists <laughs> we're the ones who wrote the, the wonderful sonnet shakespeare women like dorothy parker they write sardonic poetry you know. mm-hmm. well after living with a man mm-hmm. women get sardonic this is when even when they're single before they ever meet a man now, Patsy, do you, you, do you agree with the doctor that men are the no. romanticists and women are the practical realists? Well, um, I think that the man should handle the money purely for this reason. Uh, there's been so much conversation about women emasculating men and not allowing them to be masculine and so forth, and, and they're becoming defeminized. And I think that uh, this is just another step. If a woman allows a, a 
well, rather, if men allow women to take care of the money, this is just another step in, in, the, uh, in, in absconding from uh, manhood. Relinquishing, that's right. Well, absolutely. Uh, when you keep saying that uh, women should handle the money, I mean, you know what you're doing. You're just, uh, you're sort of uh, giving uh, too much power, more or less, to the women in the sense that... Uh, not they, at all, they not at all. Let them, let them domineer over, over the pocketbook and keep them out of the things that really matter. I know it, but a woman doesn't stop at the pocketbook. Well, I what mean, else matters so besides the money? <laughs> well, there's there are a great many things. Money, right? money is supremely unimportant, actually. Yeah. Far too much attention is paid in this materialistic crap I society of ours. With you, well, I, I tell you, you try that sometime. You go to Dave Chasen's restaurant and try to get a meal there for nothing. I was just going to say, uh, uh, people who You'll say You'll be out parking cars in 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Money is terribly important. I don't mean that, that there aren't things, but there are more important things. There's health and love and mm -hmm. respect for parents and raising the children properly and all those things. But money, money is important, particularly in these days. True, but happiness isn't everything. It no. won't buy money. <laughs> That's quite true. Now, I want an honest answer from you, Doc, something that mm -hmm. I haven't had here yet tonight. <laughs> Will you say that marriage is economically sound? Is it really true that two can live as cheaply as one? Oh, decidedly not. Decidedly not. Marriage, undoubtedly, is a luxury. There are very few wives that, that bring in as much as they cost. Nevertheless, most husbands... He that does a tomcat. <laughs> most husbands, I hasten to say... I hasten to say, Pat, most husbands would agree that the wives are worth it. Pat, uh, you'd better give us the woman's viewpoint here. How do you feel about the life of a housewife? Uh, I, I don't think that housekeeping uh, and uh, being in the home and, and uh, just just sort of 90% of the time being in the home and doing all that work is really so important, up to a point it's Well, important. who should do it, the husband? No, 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 I think the woman should... Thank you for agreeing with me, Proctor. I think that the woman should do her job, but I don't think that this is the end and the all of, of living. I think that a woman has to have more than that. A man's going to come home, and, and the big conversation, uh, he walks in, and hello, honey, and the first thing she says, well, honey, do you know something what happened today? Our garbage disposal broke down, and I had to call the plumber in. You know, I mean, this, yeah. is, this is no conversation, but this is what happens. It deteriorates. But... Well, don't you want him to know that the garbage disposal is broken? Well, it's... If, it's, if you leave it broken, he's going to find out sooner or later, you know. <laughs> well, it, it's a limited type of relationship, Groucho, and, and I think that... Uh, uh, what do you expect him to do? Come home and dance like Fred Astaire, perhaps? Uh, no, but I don't expect him to come home Jump on the table and... and no, no. He's tired. No. Well, he's tired, He's been but beaten all day by the boss. He's been browbeaten by somebody. Very few people are heads well, of their own companies. He's yes, tired. Yes, I know. I appreciate that, And he Groucho. got up early. And, and men work hard, and they're under a great deal of stress and everything, but... And they need uh, sympathy. But women work 24 hours yes. a day. When the child gets sick, they get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and they have to get up, and they take care of the child and everything. And um, it's 24 hours. It's on the go all the time. If a woman is a conscientious well, mother and wife... Well, a child wife, isn't always sick. No, they're not I always. know of cases where the husbands get up, too, and bite the child and help the child. Well, this didn't happen in my home. I didn't believe in it. Uh, he, my husband helped me a little bit, but not that much. But uh, I think that the... Uh, Would you like him to croon when he comes home? To no, no, songs? no. I expect him... Fabian? I expect him not to get behind a paper, usually the fishing news in this case, because he's an avid deep-sea fisherman, and get behind the fishing news... He's just news getting ready to drown himself. That's what he's trying to do. <laughs> Well, the thing is this, Groucho... And let him read the fishing news in the evening. Uh, Groucho, He's a sucker anyhow. What I'm trying to say is that women shouldn't feel that the end all is homes. They should be able to to express themselves. That this wonderful, wonderful self-expression. Oh, rubbish. They, expect, they, they should express themselves by making their husbands comfortable and happy. Oh, well, I By believe, saying I'm... he gets decent food and the house is clean. Well, all right, after and that. Then, well, there is after nothing else. That. After that. And take care of the children properly. And the poor guy is tired. Well, let's say, for instance, If Brad it wasn't Jones, for him, there wouldn't be any money in the house at all. And the guy comes home, a hard day's work, he wants to read the paper, let him read it. Mm -hmm. Let him go to bed. Mm -hmm. He's got to get up early. Well, Absolutely. 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 Thank you. This is a two-way street.
treat for the women, too. Of course I it mean, is. Yes, it is. Uh, we have to keep our men happy and content, and they should purr, and... and uh, You're back to the tomcat again. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and should, uh, should be able to have a, a quiet and good home. Well, Takes a great deal of patience and a great deal of fortitude to live with a man, and just as much as he puts up with your idiosyncrasies, you have to put up with his, too. Look, but all I he wants think... you to do is leave him alone, that's all. <laughs> Let him read the fishing news. I think, Groucho. Maybe he'll bring home a smelt someday. <laughs> I can't speak for other women in the world, but I can speak for myself. And personally, she uh, certainly can. I. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the thing is that after the housework is done, then comes the woman, the individual, the person to express oneself. And yeah. and, and there, at the end all, as I say, isn't the home. Sure, take care of it and, and bring your children up properly and so forth. But they're going to leave, girls and women. And so is your old man if you don't <laughs> treat them better. <laughs> leave them alone. That's all he's asking. <laughs> Peace and quiet. Yeah, Peace and quiet. But now it's certainly time to see if you can win some money. So, George, come out here and tell us what category they picked. Uh, you selected uh, professions of famous people, right? All right, pick your first question. One, two, or three hundred dollars. Yeah, they selected a three hundred dollar one. Well, the gamblers. For three hundred dollars, what was the profession of Henry Ward Beecher? Henry Ward Beecher. Henry Ward Beecher. He was a preacher. He was a preacher and a writer, wasn't he? Yes, he, he was. Uh, Harriet Beecher's uh, husband. Yeah. He was a preacher That's and a writer. Don't go any further. The preacher is fine. Really. And you have three hundred dollars. And Thank you. Three more chances. Uh, why don't you try another 300 one, just for kicks? What was the profession of Ambrose Bierce? Ambrose Bierce was a writer who wrote... Let's go. You don't have to go any further. <laughs> okay. Well, There's no use well, throwing you there. Now you have uh, $600. Oh, shall we try? Let me, let me pick one. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You're not satisfied with your luck so far, huh? Well, I'm <laughs> pushing my luck. I'm a gambler at heart, Groucho. All right. What was the profession of e uh, Elias Howe, I guess? It's E-L-I-A-S. Eli Elias Howe was, I hope, an inventor. That's right. Boy, and this fella have... hits it right on the nose. <laughs> $900. You'll be back. So it's, it's gravy, whatever you want to do. Oh, uh, it's money. It's not gravy. You're going to give $900 in <laughs> gravy? Mo. All right. Mo. Mo? All right. <laughs> What was the profession of George McManus? Oh, yeah, the one that wrote jigs, a cartoonist. All Thank right. you. All right, you win how much? $1,200. That's, uh, oh, that's a lot of money. You've won $1,200. And uh, <laughs> which means that later on you'll get a chance at uh, five or $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. And it was you. nice arguing with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Papa was <laughs> Gracho, uh, Penny Kelly and Jim Balboni are on deck. So folks, you come in Penny please. Henny, did you say? No, Penny Kelly and Jim Balboni. Would you come in, folks, and meet uh, Groucho Marx, please? Welcome to your bachelor life. Say the secret word and you'll divide an extra hundred dollars. Penny Henny and Jim Baloney, yeah? Huh? Penny Kelly. Huh? Penny Kelly. Penny Kelly. That's right. This is Penny Henny. And, uh, Groucho, I hate to in uh, interrupt here, but um, I think you, there's something you ought to know about Jim. Um, you mean he's 102 years old? <laughs> no. Doesn't look it. No. Uh, Doesn't look over 80. Jim is on the show at the request of 400 residents of the town of Palo Alto in California. You mean that they wanted to get him out of town? Uh, I don't know. I think they'll have to ask Jim about that. I thought I'd tell you, though. You got 400 letters uh, urging you to go on the show, requesting it? Who organized this barrage of mail? Was it you? No, Mr. Marks. It was a very good friend of mine. His name was Clay Whitehead. Uh -huh. This is a surprise to me, too. Will you come back later with the other wheel? <laughs> Goodbye. You know what that's called? <laughs> you know what that's called? No, Mr. Morris. It's, it's a girl. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, what she's riding on is called a unicycle. Oh, See, now you've learned something tonight. And you're Henny Penny, huh? That's a very cute name, huh? <laughs> 
Thank you. How old are you, Penny? Penny, Penny Kelly, huh? That's right. Kelly Penny, is it? Penny Kelly. Penny. I don't know. <laughs> are you Pennies from heaven, or? Penny Kelly. That's, well, that's a cute name for a Thank very you. cute girl. Don't you think she's cute? Yes, I do, Mr. Marks. How old are you, Penny? Sixteen. Sixteen? Gee, that's... you don't look it. You look about sixteen and a half. <laughs> are you a local girl? I'm from North Hollywood, out in the mm -hmm. valley. That's right. Where do you go to school? North Hollywood High. I'm a senior A. What do you like best about school? Vacation? Mm, no, well, I like math and languages, and boys you like make what? it exciting. Math and what? Languages. Languages? Mm hmm What else? You like, what about boys? I like boys. What are boys? And I'd be interested in your opinion of boys. Penny, what is a boy as, as uh, compared to a girl? Well, they're, they're different from girls. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this. Uh, in what way? I mean, well, they're men. Describe a boy. They're I mean, athletic and tall, and some are handsome, and, <laughs> and someone you can talk to and have dates with. And you can talk to a tape recorder too. Well, <laughs> not like you can to a boy if you like him. Or Suppose you get tired of a boy. Can you trade him in and get a new one every few days? No, not quite. You can. I don't know if they call you, you can say you're not home and... Well, how can you say you're not home if, <laughs> if you're talking to them no, on the phone? You, you can have your parents, like I have my mother do sometimes, say that Your mother know. lies for you? My brother does sometimes, does. too. Well, gives you an idea what chance you got, Sonny, <laughs> or any other male. Do you have a, a, a boyfriend? Well, I've got several at the moment. Uh, only seven? Uh, Seven. Seven, you know? Well... You know somebody in the supply room. <laughs> how'd, you get, how'd you get seven? Well... Wasn't six enough? <laughs> no, well, they're nice boys. I mean, you know, well, something different once in a while. <laughs> you mean each, boy, each of the seven is different? Well, pretty much so, huh? One likes to dance, maybe, and another will just like to go to a show, and another one just likes to eat. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're different. Mm -hmm. Well, do you go out with the whole seven? Or Not uh, at one time, no. no. Well, now, when you go out with one, do the other six, uh, are they aware of the fact that you're cheating on them? No. <laughs> Well, how do you how do you keep them separate like that? You must do some pretty f nifty uh, footwork, huh? You're gonna get me in a lot of trouble, Mr. Mark. <laughs> well, uh, apparently you've been able to get into a lot of trouble without me. <laughs> <laughs> now, who are you? You're Jim Balboni, huh? Yes, Mr. Mark. How old are you? I'm 16. Mr. Where do you go to school? I go to school at Coverly High School in Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Yes. Uh, do you have the same attitude towards girls that uh, Penny has towards boys? Sure, naturally. <laughs> well, what is a girl to you? What does it represent? Why do boys like girls? I never did understand that. <laughs> well, uh, they're soft. Uh, so is a sponge. <laughs> and, and the difference doesn't end there, either. <laughs> Soft. That's a fine recommendation for womanhood. Huh? <coughs> Statues of women and beautiful paintings by Renoir all over the world. And he likes them because they're soft. <laughs> now, do you have seven females on a string? No, Mr. Marks. All, uh, one is all I can handle at a time. Uh, well, how many have you had, I mean, over the years? Well, uh, I mean, when did you start going with... When did you discover that girls were like a sponge? <laughs> I guess there's How old were you then? Well, I guess I was about 13, I guess, in my 13. freshman year, yeah. That's when you first started to look at them? Well, no, that's when I first started to look at them and see something. <laughs> <laughs> well, could you tell us what you saw in general? <laughs> well... They're soft and cuddly. And... <laughs> well, you're 16 now, and you were 13 then, and in those three years, they haven't changed at all. They're still soft and cuddly, huh? Yes. 
Well, I uh, guess that's true to a degree. Groucho, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but uh, our time's running out, and I know you want to talk at length with these youngsters, so why don't we invite them to come back next week? Fine, fine idea. I just gotten started with them, you know. Yes. The, uh, I'd like to have a long talk with Penny, could you come back next week? You know, you might have to break your date with those seven boyfriends you've got tied up. So why don't you both come back next week, and then you'll have a chance to do the quiz and play You Bet Your Life, and perhaps win a lot of money. So, so long, and... Uh, I'll see you uh, later. Well, we'll see if anybody's going to... George, have you got two people out there who's going to try for the big money? Uh, yes, Groucho. Uh, uh, Pat Winneman and uh, Dr. Proctor uh, Thompson uh, won $1,200, and here they come to see if they can make that 10000 Well, back again, eh? <laughs> now, uh, one of you pick a number for a total of 10000 um. From 1 to 10. Eight, please. Eight, put up an eight there, Mr. McFenema. Uh, All right. You three is a good number. Three, three is three. a good number. Huh? Now, uh, if any number but those two comes up, the question is where the total of, of uh, 2,000. Now, one of you spin the wheel. Do you want me to Go ahead. Doctor? I trust you. Probably flub this one. Keep cool, kid. Keep that's, cool. That's and my son's favorite number. He told me to mind. pick an eight. Keep your distance there, uh, young woman. <laughs> Keep cool. While your husband is home reading the fishing news. <laughs> no help from the audience now. This is for $10,000, and we haven't got that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. One of the marvels of modern civic planning is the creation of an entirely new capital city for Brazil. For $10,000, what is the name given to this new Brazilian, Brazilian seat of Brazilian. government, Brazilian. which is built in a heretofore remote part of the country? We're, we're sunk. Yeah, Brazilian. Brazilian. What's the answer? Brasilia. Brasilia is right. Oh! <laughs> now, there's just one more problem. Try to get the money. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. It's been a long time since anybody has won $10,000 up here. What are you going to do with the, your five? After you've paid the government, of course. Well, there's uh, a tax man sitting out front all the time. Here. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm going to invest my money into my children's future. That's, I that's, think that's the best investment. That's, that's a good. And and one more thing. Yeah. Let your husband read the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Buy him a subscription to it. In fact, with this. Get him some fishing tackle. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. loaded yeah. with that. Yeah. And what are you going to do with your money? Well, this uh, this is an astounding piece of luck. As you know, university professors are not noted for being wealthy. And this very nearly doubles my year's salary. I think as a matter of You're fact... You're gonna put it in that old tomato can in the No, <laughs> no, I think I'll probably take a flyer in the market with it. Pick out a stock of some sort and I invest see. it in some good... Well, I've got something good I'll tell you about later. All right. <laughs> All right. Because I get good information. You see, I was wiped out in 29. And I, <laughs> and I have that same fella still in my employ. And Very good. You he'd, got be, he'd be happy to pauperize you, and one day he can do it. You've got a thing about this. Thank you. Well, this is... This is Congratulations, good. and thanks Thank for being with us. Project. And I'm glad you won the money. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.